Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas, and today we're going to do Volume Automation 101 in Studio One. Okay, first thing we want to cover is what is volume automation and why would we want to use it? The main example I can think of, and I'll show you this in a session in just a second, is there's a part that the volume is good for, let's say, most of the track, but there are sections where that part is getting lost, like a lead vocal or a lead guitar. Um, it gets a little quieter and the rest of the mix drowns it out. So we need it to go up in volume, but just in that one specific section. Volume automation is a way to do that. Okay, here's our example. This WAV file here is a guitar solo. And if you look at it visually, it stays fairly consistent in volume, but in the mix, there's a section where I'm losing it a little bit. It's losing its volume. So let's listen to that real quickly, and then we'll talk about different ways we can automate this. <laughs> Okay. In the first half, I feel like it's a good volume. We can hear the notes. We can hear what's happening. The delay is cool. Right at the halfway point, when it starts playing a little bit lower notes, maybe it's just because it's a lower, little bit lower register on the guitar, it's getting buried. The ba -na 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 -na, this part. In solo, it's ridiculously loud, but with everything else in the mix, it's getting pushed down. So I think that part pardon the delay, could be turned up a little bit. So let's talk about volume automation, and then I'll show you a couple of alternatives that you can use if you don't want to use automation, and there are times where you might not want to. First of all, there are three ways to turn on automation on a particular channel. The first way is the way Gregor told me to never ever do again or he will end me because apparently it's the least efficient way. And that way is to do it this way. So you pick the parameter you want to automate, in this instance, we're talking about volume automation, so it's the fader. So I click on the fader, and we'll notice in the top left-hand corner of the window, we'll see that the solo track's volume parameter was the last parameter to be touched, so that one's ready to be automated. And we can click on this A, and it will create an automation lane or show us the automation lane for that volume here on the solo track. So an automation lane is just a different view of this particular track that shows me a horizontal line for the volume setting. And this is kind of like a track that the fader rides on. So right now, if I move the fader, that little horizontal line, that track moves up and down with me. Once I start writing automation, then that track stays in one place and the fader will follow that. So we can write automation in a number of ways. One way is just to add in some points and to just move this around. And you'll notice if we do things like this, the fader will now follow these movements. <laughs> Okay. Those aren't helpful movements, but that gives you the idea. So that is the essential essence of automation. But before we dive into that more, so that the way I did that was I clicked on the fader, then I went way up here and clicked on the A, which shows edit automation for that parameter. Gregor says don't do that again, so I have to listen to him. Another option, there's two other ways to do this, is take your, let's go back to where we were, okay, is to right click on the parameter and then choose it from the drop down menu here, edit automation. Whoosh did the same thing, I could do it from right here instead of having to go all the way up here with my mouse and get carpal tunnel. So thank you, Gregor, for saving my wrist bones. Okay, and the third way to do it, and this apparently is Gregor's favorite, and we all try to do whatever Gregor says, is to just left click on it, normal click on the fader, and then use option A, keyboard shortcut. So now we're using both of our hands. I click with my right hand, I option A with my left hand, and there it is. So this works for any parameter. If I wanna automate this mute for some reason, Option A, now I'm looking at the mute automation for that. That's pretty handy, that's what I'm gonna try to use from now on. Thanks, Gregor, I promise to try my best to use that. And on the PC, I believe it's Alt A. Option on the Mac is usually always Alt on the PC. There you go. There's your trick for the day brought to you courtesy of Gregor, because I didn't even do that. I've been known to come up here. You can also drag the automation like this onto the tracks, so that's the secret fourth way to do it. Okay, either way, however you get there, this is where we land when we're talking about volume automation. We can now see, we can't edit the audio here because it's kind of hidden behind the automation lane. So if I press delete here, we don't delete any audio, but we can delete any 
automation parameters like that, okay? Okay, so now let's talk about the problem with volume automation. It's a wonderful thing, but you can back yourself into a corner if you're not careful. Let's say early on in my process of this song, I decide I wanna automate this solo. So I'm doing something like this, you know, whatever. And then later in the song, I get to this part. So the, the lead guitar plays another part over here. And let's say I wanna turn this part up, okay? Look what happened when I stopped playback. Every time I stop playing, that fader goes back to where it was. Why is it doing that? Because this is the nature of automation. It's really a feature more than a bug. If you think it's messed up, this is actually kind of how it's designed to work. Once we add any automation to a parameter, that entire song, the, entire, the entirety of that song is now locked into whatever parameters we've set. That means it's gonna follow these points here, but any time before and after, it's gonna be stuck to that, that track, right? It's like a train on a train track. Once we add any automation, the entire track is now, ha now has to necessarily follow the automation for the entire track. So then what you would have to do is now you're gonna have to come in here and automate this up or down to get it to go up or down where you want it to go. This is why I recommend don't automate too early if you're not ready. If you're still in kind of that phase of just setting your levels and you're not quite sure where all the levels are and maybe you still need to add some plugins and get those final levels in place, then don't do this too early. So one question I meant to cover at the beginning is, can't you just do an entire mix without any volume automation? We would call that like something like a static mix. And the answer is yeah. Sometimes the tracks just perform themselves in such a way that they don't need anyone riding the fader up and down in sections. Other times you miss out on a better mix because some of the things get lost and then some of the things are too loud and, and some automation would be a good way to move those pieces around. So if static is motionless, automation has motion to it. The faders are moving, they're flying around, right? Another question would be, why can't I just use compression? Doesn't compression deal with those differences in volume? And the answer is yes to a degree, but sometimes the answer is like, for example, this electric guitar solo, it's already fairly compressed just by the nature of it being a pretty overdriven guitar signal. So adding more compression onto this isn't gonna balance the volumes like we want. We really need just to just turn it up here at this section. So the, the different ways I would do that, you can either do it like I showed you before by just drawing in those automation uh, points manually, or you can do something like if you've got a fader port, or we'll just do it here clicking on the fader here. If you go into touch mode, then I can move this fader, and when I let go, it will go back to wherever it was. So we could ride the guitar solo like this. I'm gonna click and move the fader while it's playing, and you'll see the different points come up adding those automation points. Okay, that was okay. I didn't really jump up early enough in the beginning, so I'm just gonna do it again. I'm gonna go back, hit play. I don't have to press record. It's just gonna memorize whenever I touch the fader, it's gonna memorize what I did. might be a little dramatic and over the top, but I think it kind of works and explains what I'm trying to show you. So maybe this point needs to be moved back just a little bit to get it there. Um, and we can also do this. I love doing this kind of automation with something like, this is the, uh, this is the Personas, uh, this is the IO Station 24C. Uh, the fader port from Personas would do the same thing. It's a great tool. If you just need a single fader to do those automation rides, that can be great for that. Once you're done, remember, Always put it back into read mode so you don't accidentally write more automation where you don't mean to. Now, let's say you did write some automation and then later you realize the entire track just needs to be turned up or down. Well, we already covered that you can't do that by just moving the fader. What options do you have? One option is just to select the entire track and then using the trim tool here just to move the whole thing up and down. This will maintain your automation points and their relative relation, but it moves everything up and down. That's a pretty simple, fairly elegant way to do that. Another way to do it would be to create a VCA fader. So let's add a VCA for selected channels. So over here on the right-hand side, we have this VCA. That is controlling 
the solo fader, and we could now move this fader down, and you can see on the screen it's moving the horizontal version, the, the automated version of this up and down, similar to like the trim feature in other DAWs. We can do it just like that, no problem. We could even automate this VCA fader to move up and down, and then it would follow the VCA fader's automation in addition to the solo. Anyway, can get crazy, but you get the idea. Let's say we aren't comfortable with the whole automation idea at all, and we're just not ready to, we're not ready to commit to that. What other options do we have? Well, one option is to simply come in on the audio level and adjust the actual audio itself. There are situations where I think that can make more sense, especially if it's just a section of audio that needs to come up and down, and there aren't any plugins on the channel that would be adversely affected by the audio jumping up and down in volume. For example, a compressor, if it sounds amazing on this part, but then you jack up this volume here, that could mess up the compressors sound and maybe you don't want to do that automation happens fader automation volume automation happens after the plugins any adjustments we make to the audio file itself happens before the plugins so that's something to keep in mind so for this solo here <laughs> It's this second half that we want to turn up we could do something like this we just select it with our range tool Double click, it creates a new area, a new region, a new event, and we can just turn that up by increasing the little gain tab there. That's one option. Another option is to use one of our newer features, which is called Clip Gain Envelopes. Just right click on the event, select Clip Gain, and you'll see something that looks very similar to volume automation, and it behaves almost identically. Uh, but what's happening is it is actually moving the underlying audio. So it's changing the gain of the audio before it ever gets into your plugins. So if you want to even out volumes before you compress, this is one cool way to do that. As you can see, it's like automation, but we can still move our fader up and down. The fader is not following that movement. That is actually sort of like an automation lane for the audio file itself before it goes anywhere else. Very cool feature and something that's become available as of Studio One version 5. So if you don't have version 5 and you like that feature, that might be a good reason to upgrade. Volume automation is just one piece of the automation puzzle. If you want to learn more, check out this great video by Gregor on track and part automation, which will help you deepen your automation understanding even further. I'll link to it in the description. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.